If you want to see more videos and interviews like this from influential people in tech, finance, and sports, subscribe to the channel and make sure you hit the bell to be alerted. And go a step further and join the YouTube and membership area for early releases of videos like this. I'm out of here. Ha! One of the things that I'm working on now is, is a stablecoin project. And I am working on a way to deliver, because stablecoins are a very important part of this industry, but they have to be decentralized. And you have them decentralized by people locking up assets. They have to have more value locked in them. Provably, we want to do it at 0% interest loans. So people lock up things into a smart contract so they don't let go of their keys. They hold the keys. And because um, not your keys, not your crypto, but they, they send it to a smart contract. So it's not at Silicon Valley Bank. It's not at Celsius. It's not at BlockFi. It's at a smart contract that you control as the user. And you open up the smart contract, put some funds in, lock it, and then borrow up half of that value or more, 80% of that value as a stable coin that you mint into existence. Now, now you've got the stable coin and, it's, and you've got more value backing that stable coin than the value of that thing. So now you've got a currency that's actually back, kind of like the gold standard originally, but at 0% interest. Now, how did the rich, how did the super wealthy make money during inflation? The answer is that you borrow as much as you can at fixed interest. And the, why the, only the rich and the super wealthy and powerful could do this is because they had that leverage with bank manager. The normal pleb goes into the bank and they're like, give me a fixed interest with no, you know, and they're like, no, no we're not going to do that. It's too risky for us. You know, Because they also, the banks also see that there's an inflation coming. So they don't want inflation to eat away at their profits. What would be your rebuttal to, you know, about Terra Luna and that whole debacle? Yeah. Uh, how would you explain to a person that, hey, I have a, basically a programmable stable coin and the first mm -hmm. thing you're going to think of is Terra Luna. Mm -hmm. So how would you differentiate yourself from a Terra Luna scenario? And do you see that being a barrier for you since Terra Luna went down as far as people's understanding and not just associating any programmable stable coin to Terra Luna? Yeah, I, I, absolutely. It's, it's a problem. The thing is, I started working on this because I saw Terra Luna as a problem. In fact, there's video of me warning people of Terra Luna and other algorithmic stablecoins that they will get very large and collapse. And then the government will step in and try mm. to you know, create uh, regulations to crush the whole industry. The difference with what we're doing is that so Terra Luna, what they did is they said, we've got this thing called Luna and it's a it's a governance coin and we can print as many of them as we want they had one usd coin you know it was pegged to the mm -hmm. usd and mm -hmm. they said this is one dollar now if one luna is worth 50 cents right what they did is they said okay we mint we print two luna right. and and back that one dollar with the because they're worth 50 Correct. cents now if luna goes down in value by half we'll print four of them and back it. Now right. it's still $1. If it goes down again, we'll print six of them, 12 of them, yep. 15 of them. And they, they had the ability to print their own currency that had no real value and kept on backing their so-called stable coin uh, with their own coin that they could mint out of nowhere. What we're doing is we don't have the ability to back any of the coins with anything what happens is that users take rare assets that we cannot print out of nowhere like bitcoin where there's only 21 million or ethereum which is now also deflationary also the community will decide what other tokens will be allowed but one thing we are going to launch with after launch is tokenized gold um, mm. so that people can also lock up gold and mint uh, currency or effectively a gold standard what you can do then is you're locking up real rare assets. We cannot print that out of nowhere and destroy the thing. Now, imagine if you have um, 10,000 bucks locked in and you've borrowed $8,000 from yourself. You've taken a loan out from yourself. You've locked up 10,000, you've borrowed eight uh, from yourself. Now you've got 10,000 locked in there. So it's in your interest to pay back that eight and remove the 10 grand, especially if Bitcoin goes up in price and now you're sitting on 50 grand.